Hi, welcome to video 14, hooking up the groove. I hardly feel comfortable saying that since we're not quite making groovy music yet, but we are using the groove object, so let's get on with it. Um, we were working in the super duper sampler um, when we got done before uh, in our last tutorial, and let's click it open. Whoops, let's lock our patcher and click it open. And there it is. So we had gotten the <clears throat> groove object to work um, by loading a sound in the buffer and getting this to play the buffer. Nice. Now all we have to do is figure out how to get our frequency, which is coming in over here, and our volume to control the groove object. So let's unlock our patcher and consider for a moment what needs to be done here. We need, uh, let's put some uh, number boxes in here so that we can actually see what's going on. Here's a number for our incoming velocity. And here's a number Excuse me, this one, incoming hertz. I'm just going to write a comment here. Hertz, capital H, small z. And I'm going to write another comment over here. Just type the letter C, and I'm going to type volume. And then in parentheses, velocity, because we're uh, using MIDI, MIDI terminology here as we like to do when we're sampling. Got to know the lingo. Okay, so that's just to remind ourselves of what's going on. Thinking about this in a simple way, if we have a note that we're playing at a certain speed, um, we want to be able to figure out what ratio to send this number to get it to play the next step up. Um, there's a reasonably simple way to do that that I'll show you right now. Um, we'll type an N for a new object and then just um, push the forward slash which is divide and then type in there 1.0. The reason I say 1.0 is just in case you haven't entered anything in here, though we will be entering something in there, it won't get a divide by zero um, problem. And let's put that over our floating point box so that we'll be able to see what it's actually doing. So if you it, let lock your patcher for a second. If you push a key down, you should get a frequency over here in your in your box. So let's just see. Here's A. I'm not getting anything. Oh, I know why. Uh, I'm gonna, because we never selected gate three. And if you don't select gate 3, how are you going to get anything in your box, right? Look at that. Of course, we can't hear it anymore, but that's okay. So now when we push the A, we get a 130. When we push S, we get 146. When we push D, we get 164. If your numbers aren't that exactly, it's probably just because you've shifted them a little bit by hitting... Um, Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Oh, by hitting the arrow keys. Um, but don't worry about it. As long as you're getting different numbers in here, that's fine. Look over here while you're hitting them. Push A, you should get whatever your volume is. Mine's 119 at the moment. And when you let the A key up, you should get a zero. Excellent. So the first thing, <clears throat> we're going to unlock our patcher, and we're going to connect this 130 is going to come in and go and it's going to be divided by another number in this case one if our sampled sound was 130 hertz meaning a C then we would like to divide by one so that we get a C but if it were an octave higher let's just say it was C let's say this is C what is this C2 if it was C3 we would want to Multi we would want to divide by 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 
Right. And in order to divide by 0.5, we would need to know the... Uh, do you get what I'm saying here? What we want to end up is with twice the number here. So we would want to um, know what the original sample is and divide by it. So 130 divided by, excuse me, you would want to divide by 130 to get the number 1. So let's go back and look at that sound that we imported. Oh, uh, here we go again. Max. <clears throat> Examples. Sounds. And cello. And let's just take a quick look at it. They labeled it here very handily F2. And that probably means that it's an F2, meaning the second F on the... It's actually the third F because they have an F0. The second F on the keyboard scale. And if we're going to use a different sound, we're going to use this one because it's A1, and at least we know what they are. Okay. We'll later solve that problem, too. Let's get back to Max here. So how do I know what an F2 is? There's a, I'm going to say, a somewhat easy way to figure that out, um, and that is this. You get yourself, uh, unlock your patcher, get a number box, Oops, I locked my patcher. Unlock your patcher again and get a number box and go over to your inspector. In your inspector, you'll see display format and you can scroll down to at the bottom. It says MIDI. And now any number We can see that, uh, let's get another number box so that we can see what's coming out of there. So essentially by having it display MIDI, it's telling us what MIDI key it is. And so I'm going to lock my patch and I'm going to change this to, oh great, right. It tells us what MIDI key it is and that is useful to some degree. Let's see if we can get down to F2. F, B2, C3, B, F2, there it is. So F2 is key number 41. Um, luckily, there's another object that we know, type the letter N, called MIDI, M, T, O, frequency. And <clears throat> you don't want the one with the tilde, just the regular one. And we'll put that under there. And then type the letter F to make sure you get a float box. And put that there. Lock your patcher and try changing your notes. So F2 is 87.31 hertz. How exciting. And all we have to do, I like to put a little dog leg in here so I can move them around. Okay, just hook it up there. And then let's uh, just jiggle it a little bit so we get some, uh, whoops, am I locked? No, lock. Get back to F2. That way it'll load the number into here. And then when we play our keys, we get some number over F2 because F2 is our sample amount and then our incoming note we're going to want it to be if it's a higher note then it'll end up being a greater than one fraction if it's a lower note than F2 it's going to be a less than one fraction and if it is an F2 it'll end up being one does that make perfect sense I hope so so let's try it here comes our letter A on the keyboard which I believe is C Did, uh, don't forget to click outside your box. Here we go. F2. Now click outside the box. There we go. Okay. And we have to fiddle around with that just to make sure. Okay. Click outside your box and now type an A. And we see that we get it down there. Excellent. Excellent. 
Why on earth isn't it playing? Well, for a perfectly good reason. We're entering a number here and sending it to the signal, but we're not hitting start loop. In order to get that to happen, we could do this one of two ways. Of course, we could trigger it with this incoming number, but that number is going to come in twice, once when it comes on and once when it comes off. What we want is for the on to trigger it um, from the incoming velocity, and then we will get that uh, sound. Here, um, it sounds more complicated than it is. Unlock your patcher and type N and type select zero. Okay, so what is going to happen when that zero comes in? When the, when the any number comes in here, it'll come out this outlet if it's not zero. You see it says so input if the input doesn't match. So anything that's not a zero is going to come out here, and what we want it to do is send a bang to start loop. Okay, so to do that we're going to put a button in there. And then we're going to connect the button to start loop. Okay, lock your patcher and see if it works. Yeah. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful. Oh my goodness, and did you hear that? So, by this number changing, and then this banging whenever it gets a non-zero number, we get it to play. You might have noticed, however, that it doesn't shut off when you let go of the number. So if it is sending out a zero, we would really appreciate it if it would just um, uh, stop playing. And in order to do that, we're not actually going to um, we're not actually going to tell it to stop its loop, but what we are going to do is tell it to shut the volume off. Um, and so uh, what we want to do is send the right number to a gain control. But <clears throat> as you probably know, as you may remember, as you should take as a given rule, nothing is ever so simple. So our gain, if we look at it in the inspector, has uh, 158 steps and we remember that our incoming velocity is going to be 0 to 127 so we know that we're gonna to have to scale it so let's just get to it and scale it type the letters type the <laughs> spell scale correctly and type it not tilde but with a space then our incoming numbers are going to be between 0 and 127 and our outgoing numbers are going to be between 0 and 158 okay and then instead of having it um, instead of having it just send that number all of a sudden do you remember our nice uh, line object from uh, from a previous uh, noisemaker. Let's put one of those in there. Line and give it 20 milliseconds and that way we, we won't end up with any popping. Um, so whatever numbers coming in here from scale it's going to go into line and it's going to get there in 20 milliseconds and ramp our volume, our gain control up and down. So, <clears throat> and let's get that actual number first from, well we can get it from here or here, it doesn't really matter. 
uh, I'll just get it from we'll just get it from here and then if it's zero same thing oh that looks so fancy Okay, so let's give it a whirl here. Lock your patcher, and here we go. Hmm, not working at all. Um, ah, I see it here. Let's unlock your patcher. Get rid of these. Here's the way to do it. Why make things more complicated than they need to be? Just because it's fun? That's not a good enough reason. Here we go. We want to make sure that the actual number comes through here instead of um, being output as a bang. That was my mistake. It just outputs a bang um, if you get that number. It doesn't pass the number through. So lock your patcher down again, and let's hear it. OK. Do you see the volume control moving there? Well, nice. And now here's a question. <clears throat> you know, maybe we'll just stop there and I'm going to continue in the next video telling you how to really make this thing cool. But for now, you have a fully working super duper sampler here and I'm gonna get you in the next video talk to you soon bye bye